Okay, we're recording the Common Metrics Workbook meeting on May 2nd. Cool. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's just get started. We have we have a few things on the agenda. Um, first off, does somebody want to agree to take notes? I'm always happy to do that. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, we'll run through previous action items. I also um, published, so we just started working in the new repository where I published a readme, but I think we need to just run through it and see if we have the right things and update the list of contributors and maintainers. And then we'll also discuss the release spreadsheet similar to what DNI did, but different because we don't have a lot of our metrics defined. So we'll start with um, the previous action items. So Sean, you were going to create I'm a back. template. I'm oh, good. Back. Oh, good. Because so. because you have an action item that we're reviewing. Uh, um, create a, create a template in the repository. Yeah. Did I? <laughs> I remember working on it, and then I remember not knowing. Oh, I remember what happened. I missed the last call. The last call I was on we didn't know which repository to create it in because we hadn't decided to have our own repository then we had decided to use the metrics repository and you weren't on the call and nobody was willing to answer questions and i was not sure where to put it because if i put it in the metrics repo then it would have been like obviously i felt i was like how do i do that because that'll be confusing but now I think we decided we're going to have our own working group repo for just stuff like that. Yep. Okay. Okay. So perfect. I so, will, so I will create that this week. Um, I should have like connected those dots earlier, but since I missed last call, I had not connected those dots. Um, sorry. No, no worries. That's perfect. Um, I, I also haven't done my action item, which is the next one on the list, if it makes you feel any better. Um, <laughs> it does. So, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I mean, it makes me feel less guilty anyway. <laughs> um, so I said that I would identify other issues that should be tagged with common metrics. Um, I haven't done this because, um, so now we have a new new repository. Does I, I meant to look this up before the meeting and then I forgot. Is it, can we... Oh, you moved the you moved the issues already. I moved the ones that were tagged. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so I now I will take another pass uh, um, at scrubbing those to see if there are some more that we need to move. Yeah, I went through the metrics repo issues, and at least I didn't see any more. But oh, okay, so you. you uh, oh no, if you've already done that, um, I will just, we'll just, how about we call this one done? Sure. Yeah, let's call it done. <laughs> let's just declare victory. Done. Georg yeah. very helpfully did this for Don. Well, Thank I, you, Georg. <laughs> I just went through the metrics repo issues for a different reason and accidentally finished it. <laughs> <laughs> I, not complaining. I, so my, my folks have been in town, um, and they're they're in Edinburgh for a couple of days, but um, but it's just created all kinds of chaos. Like I can't get anything done. I thought you know, sort of like on the weekends before they're not before they're out of bed, I could get a few things. But I'm not getting anything done, and there it's three weeks they're here. But yeah, we always have those aspirations, and then they fail to materialize because yeah, exactly. So it's just my my life has been because I was traveling for like a month and then home for a couple of weeks, and then my parents were here, and I've just I've gotten nothing done. Things should start to get back to normal after KubeCon. Good. Um, normal is not a bad th state of affairs. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like normal. Uh, okay, so the next one, Daniel was going to open an issue about responsiveness metrics. I assume there's no update on that one. Um, Matt, who is mushroom hunting instead of on the call. Um, has the next two action items. Open a PR to include metrics from the geographic metrics discussion. I haven't seen a PR. No, I think about it. I, don't, I think I forgot to track this repository. I think I'm probably not even getting notifications about it. Um, and he was gonna send an email to the chaos list to get consensus on which repositories to pin. 
That's uh, what so happened. Decided to uh, just make an executive decision and not cause any conversation. Oh, okay. If cool. someone complains, they complain and we can fix it. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Um, okay. So I will. Uh... Um, and then we're going to look at the org affiliation questions again. We don't have Brian or Toby on the call. Brian Prophet is traveling back from California right now. I had breakfast with him this morning and he says hi. Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So I think we should probably just put that as no updates. Um, okay. Uh, so next on the agenda, review the, the readme. Here I will oops, see if I can, I can just share my screen. Let me just we get should the, have permission. Yeah, let me just get the page up. I, I use a separate computer for, for things. Um, I can also share the screen if you want. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it since you're taking notes. I don't want to interfere with, with that bit. Okay, I got it. Okay. Just took me a minute to... Uh... Okay, can people see that all right? Yes. Okay. So basically what I did was I took Sean's newly created um, risk... Uh, I think it was the risk one um, working group and I basically copied and pasted a whole bunch of stuff and updated it with details about the common metrics working group. Excellent. So point mine's a sub mine's a nominal clone of the value working group. So. Ah, nice. Perfect. <laughs> We're just cloning the clones. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not going to create something new if I can just steal something that someone else has already done. Exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so it has a link to the mailing list, the weekly calls, um, the just kind of a general background, which I think is the same as what we had on the participate page. And then the only other section we really have is uh, contributors. And so what I did here, I, since Garrig and I had been the ones that seemed to be doing most of the sort of work in the repo, like uh, creating the repo and pull requests and things. I put the two of us as maintainers. Is there, is there anyone else that we should make a maintainer? Um, I don't, I mean, I guess. A maintainer, Sean? Make, if you make a maintainer, I can do my to-dos a little bit, um, a little easier. Yeah. Don't okay. you have access to all of the chaos repos anyway? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's up to you guys. If, if there's two maintainers, I think that's been kind of, we've had two or three, so I'm happy to be a maintainer. I'm also happy to let that just be you guys for now. So I don't so have a, I, I don't, I don't, have a strong, having, I don't have a strong feeling either way. Sean, Sean, I don't mind having you as a maintainer. I was just thinking whether you want to take on the official role of the maintainer or whether you're having the edit rights that a maintainer like, has. Is like viewing the, like reviewing pull requests and things like that. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think it would be helpful because I'm kind of a, I guess I'd consider myself an overlap with the evolution group. And, and so in that way, the things that overlap with evolution risk value, which are the other calls I'm in a lot, I think I can, it would be nice to have that visibility to the pull request. So the responsibility gives me visibility that might help keep us knit together or okay. might okay. not be necessary. Like, like I said, I think it might be useful, but I'm not like, like I don't feel slighted if we just say, let's yeah. just have two right now. I just wanted clarity and I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm that. generally happy to have more maintainers. Um, okay, so I will add you as a maintainer. Um, and then as a reminder, the, to be a core contributor, you basically participate 
kind of at least at least once once a month in some way. So whether it's in uh, okay, Don to correct typo about the DNI meetings, which I copied and pasted that part from. Um, remove DNI mention. Um, so that's the criteria for becoming a core contributor is basically participation in some way, at least once a month over a period of three months. Um, so the way I'm reading this since the, we really kind of just started this working group, it probably hasn't even, I don't think it's been around quite three months. Um, basically people who had been in most of the meetings to date got added as the core contributors. Um, and then I added uh, Kate Stewart because she's provided a lot of other, other feedback. Um, but hasn't really participated on a regular basis. Is there yeah. anyone else? Who, who did I miss? Is the question. Well, Andrea is on the call and not on the list. And there we but go. But it's fair that I'm not on the list. <laughs> um, I, I joined regularly the early calls uh, driven by Sean um, and, uh, and, and uh, Matt. Uh, and, and then our our big boss changed the, the time of our weekly uh, staff meeting that overlaps perfectly on, with our call on Tuesday. Uh, so I'm trying to join either the call with uh, Sean and uh, uh, Jesus. Name? Jesus, yes, Jesus from Viterbia uh, on Wednesday or now this call. I'm. Uh, surely I'm interested in the different metrics, how the metrics show the status of, a, of an open source project or so the maturity and decline or the common metric. Uh, but it's, it's, um, it, it's hard to be regular at every, every call because I always have some internal wider call that overlaps uh, right. from internal linear steering calls or other. So it's, it's absolute, absolutely fair that I'm not listed as a contributor, in, in full honesty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I proposed a couple of metrics in, in GitHub, a uh, couple where we, we discussed uh, about the geography, about the time zone, or the, uh, the other one was whether it's uh, Community-driven or or uh, company-driven project. Uh, so I proposed few few metrics, uh, but uh, I, I don't think I'm a, I'm a good contributor. Okay, well we'll add you to the all contributors, which is the list of all of the people who have um, contributed. At least contributed one. Okay. Yes, <laughs> all of the people. And then if you if you continue to join the meetings and continue to want to be engaged, we'll we'll migrate you up to the core contributors at that point. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And it's not an obligation when you're listed. It's a. Uh, we just want to recognize the people who do make contributions. Oh, I, I, yes, I, I appreciate and That's why in, in honesty, if I don't contribute enough, I would be the first to ask not to be put there. <laughs> yeah, because one of the things we noted in particular with, with DNI, but it's also happening in this working group as well, is we do a lot of the work, initial work and kind of documents and things. Yes. Um, and so you know, the fear was that, you know, we do all this work in documents and it tends to be like me or Georg or Emma, like kind of yeah. a couple of people who always tend to pull those together into a pull request. And we don't want all the credit to go to, you know, kind of the same couple of people right. who just happen to be submitting the pull requests versus all of the people who gave us mm -hmm. loads of feedback and contributed in other ways. So I think it's, I think it's important to make sure that we're recognizing people. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, anything else? Uh, is there anything that you see that's, uh, do we have any glaring omissions in the readme? I kept it relatively short. We still need to add like the focus areas and things, um, mainly because we haven't, I think once we get the template created and then we can get the, uh, we'll need to create a focus area section. So one activity that we did in the value group to get started on the um, focus areas mm -hmm. is we created a Google Doc where we just put the table that would later become the focus areas. 
to formulate out the goals that we have for each of those focus areas. So that's one step we can take to formalize the focus areas. Although I feel like we already have the focus areas pretty much. So it's just a matter of formalizing the wording. Yeah, I feel like we have, we have three of them defined anyways. We have the responsiveness metrics, geography, and organizational affiliation. So we have three focus areas that are defined. Um, and organizational affiliation being, you know, the hot topic that everybody wants to solve, right? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of the reason this ended up being created, to be honest, this whole working group. Um, I'll tell you what, I will, I, oh, go ahead. Oh. I was just going to say, I'm going to create an issue with a Google Doc where we can work out the language and then we can create a pull request from there. But it seemed, sounded like you had a different idea. Oh, no, that's perfect. I was just, I was, uh, was going to put an action item for somebody to start to basically do that. So, okay. um, yeah, no, that's perfect. Do you want an action item or did you already pretty much just create that issue right now? It's uh, already written up. I just need to hit submit okay. once I get the link to the Google Doc. Cool. We'll just leave that then. Um, yeah. Anything else on the, on the readme? The other bit that I added was the um, contributing doc, which I copied from the governance repo because that seemed like a reasonable place to do that. Well, if there's nothing else on the on the readme, I will stop sharing. And then um, the other piece we wanted to discuss was the release spreadsheet. So this is something that Matt has really kind of asked all of us to do. And if you click on in the notes, if you click on the the link, that will take you to the the one that we did for DNI. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, wait, sorry. Oh, look, we have a, we have a template in place for the focus for comments. If you go to the tab, the sheet for comment, it has kind of a, a template in place. Cool. Um, so we can probably, so let's get rid of the colors just because we don't want to confuse anyone. Um, and then we have, we have our three focus areas. So we have put organizational affiliation on the top because that's such a hot one. Uh, geography. And then we have responsiveness. Um, Any, any thoughts on how we want to, to drive this bit? The Matt spreadsheet bit? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it, so these are, I mean, one of the, one of the main things is to kind of give an idea of when we expect to release metrics, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I think, so for example, I think we could release a metric on what, some of these things we've defined like or like the interest area of organizational affiliations so that, that would be we can release the metric but mm -hmm. actually producing data in a useful way i think actually is the more of the challenge and that i mean so we may have more of i would say a technical social and government policy challenge uh to address there and it might not look like it might have to have considerations that are different than other metrics that we might include or we might mm -hmm include somewhere else but but i think if we're solving that problem it would be smart for us to surface some of the issues that have served as obstacles in the past 
for yeah, I mean, we see similar, um, I think a similar issue with the DNI metrics and that a lot of them aren't, they're not things that are built into tools. They're, they're things that, you know, are, you know, uh, measuring the diversity of speakers at a conference, for example, um, right. is not, not something you put in a tool and can just generate. Um, so the actual, so we'll define the, the measurements and some of them will likely be things that can be easily, um, easily Measured. quantified and put in tools. Um, and others less so. Others less so, but I think it'll, it'll depend. And some of them like geography, people have lots of ideas about how we should measure geography. Um, the, the catch is that in a lot of open source projects, you don't have the data that people want. Right. Um, so it's, it would be nice to know like the, you know, the basically lat long kind of characteristics for someone's location, yeah. but, but think, you're, lucky, think, you're lucky if you have a time zone, uh, offset, but for some communities, I mean, you know, thinking beyond kind of the traditional open source communities, if you think about maybe some smaller open source communities where there's, um, you know, where everybody's on like a forum or Slack or something and people put their location, and some communities might have that. They might have that data and be able to use it. So I think, um, I think we need to be careful not to define the metrics as we traditionally think that they can be, the data yeah. can be gathered, but more about right. how people might want to use them knowing that not everyone has that. Right. So with, it. Regards, data. with regards to this level of completeness table, to get back to the table, yeah. I think we can leave it as is right now because we have not even named any metrics within the focus areas. And I think that is a step that needs to come first before we continue pulling out this table. Yeah. So well, I think, so I think, and then I guess going back to the DNI similarities, like it is actually like Augur has a way for you to map 10 emails to one user and say when a user worked at different organizations mm -hmm. and then count that in the metrics but everybody's responsible for populating that with their own organization because maintaining a central central directory is just not a problem that is solved. But Hyperledger is trying to solve it in software, um, which where you'd have like a double anonymous ledger or whatever it is they call it. Um, so some of these things potentially can be solved with software, but they don't maybe get solved in outside of the boundaries of some organization. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's, yeah, I don't know if that was then, an important point or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then there are, are things like, you know, like the, the Linux Foundation, like uh, Corbett and Greg KH do a pretty good job of manually tracking everyone down so that they can put people in organizational affiliation categories for the date that they do that. The CNCF is also super proactive about that for, um, for at least for Kubernetes. I, I only know that one because yeah. that's the project I work on. Um, yeah, it flat out takes so, labor, though. It does. Yeah, you almost have to have people who are kind of kind of working on that, um, which is sort of interesting. Yeah. But, but yeah, so so getting back to what sorry we keep getting sorry. sidetracked. Getting back to what That's, Georg said, I think we've probably gone as far on the spreadsheet as we can right now, until we actually start to define the focus areas and figure out what what metrics we have and what our goals are. And then we can populate this with all of the metrics that we have under each of those areas and then give each of them a, you know, kind of yes, no, maybe. Okay. So I think this was actually the last thing that I had on the agenda, unless anybody's added anything else. I can add something on the fly. Yeah, sure. We've got we've got thirty minutes. I'm happy to. I mean, we, there's loads of stuff we could talk about. Yep. Uh, let's. I, I would propose we discuss the focus areas to give them a proper goal, so we can move them into the repository and to start displaying them. Perfect. So that is issue number seven, or I posted the link to the Google Doc also in the chat. And as you can see, when you open it, I already moved the, from the 
organization affiliation document that Toby and Brian had put together. Mm -hmm. I copied two goals that we currently have in there. And this is something we developed last time we met. Um, we just haven't decided which one we'd like better. So there are two options. And then geography of responsiveness, I don't know if we already have a goal formulated for those. Uh, J John Murtick did some work on that in the issue. Just going to look to see if he had proposed a specific goal. He proposed some metrics. Yeah, it looks like we haven't haven't established a specific goal for for geography yet. We could brainstorm one here if people were interested. I remember when in Vancouver we discussed about geography and the fact that people may even put uh, misleading time zones yeah. in uh, in the information. For example, somebody mentioned that from engineers from China may do not want to show that they are from China and they use U.S. time zone, for example. They, and they, and they, they may have to use a proxy to get out of China for this yes. work. Yeah. So, also, so, yes, that's also a practical explanation beyond the bad way. Yes, correct. And I don't even, I think it's, I think it's just desire, desire for anonymity to some extent. Yes. And that's, yes. which is, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it makes things uh, quite difficult. Yeah, the other um, the other one is that a lot of people set theirs to UTC or GMT, so so that's always overrepresented as well. Yeah, although we I, one one thing that Brian Prophet mentioned, and I don't think I'm saying anything that he wouldn't want to share, is is they they're, they're going to start to look at the time of day of commits according to UTC, and that when the actual work is taking place could be a signal of of where someone is approximately. Now it could also be a signal that you're me and got an idea to do something in the middle of the night and did it. Um, so I, I look like I'm in Europe, but I'm not if you use that method. So it's not, it's not perfect, but it is uh, an approximation and you could look at a contributor's overall pattern and at least make an estimate of either their sleep cycle or location. <laughs> Slow location in the work world, and it's it'd be, it'd be hard to tell without other information which um, is being signaled. Yep. I just made this landscape to give us a little more uh, space. Good idea. Yeah, I was just adding in here the issues where we currently track metrics. I like the geography summary. Okay, maybe I'll just leave it like that. I was going to start to add something to it, but I think probably simpler is better. What did you want to add? I was just thinking something about an, uh, oh gosh, now I've forgotten. Um, and, and how this <laughs> impacts their work or something like that, or how this impacts the project, I think was what I was going to add. But I think that's sort of implied and understand that's the whole reason why we look at metrics. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I realized it was redundant. Yeah. Okay, I tried to formulate something for responsiveness. Ooh, I see John just joined us, welcome. Hey, sorry, I'm 30 minutes late. No Ooh. worries, we're, we're looking at issue number, I've already lost it, uh, issue Ooh, number seven. 
if you go to the agenda. Okay, perfect. I will jump into that right now. Um, and we're setting goals for some of the focus areas, including the geography ones. We were actually just looking at what you had written in the, uh, the geographic metrics uh, issue to see how we could best summarize the goal for that. Cool. Let me pull up that issue now. So I... Yeah. I'm not talking entirely out of memory. And, um, <laughs> so while he does that, maybe we'll talk about the responsiveness one right below it. So John, in the chat, I post the Google Doc that we are working in. And I can also share the issue link that you had commented on. Yep, I found, I found it. Um, oh, okay, then I'll run it. Yep. So organization affiliation, is that the one you want to talk about, Don? Oh, we can start with that one. I like the second one better if, I, if we get to vote. I think it's uh, simpler. I don't know if other people have opinions. I have an opinion because I wrote the second one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm also interested because I propose something similar on GitHub. Cool. Yeah, I think the second one seems to be a little bit more encompassing. Um, the first one kind of feels just a little bit narrow to me. But maybe that's just how I'm just reading it off the cuff too. Yeah. It also reads more descriptive. Like we know that organizations engage with open source. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it affiliation or is it uh, corporations uh, driving uh, projects uh, by by having a lot of engineers contributing? I, I my think... favorite example in, in, in this case, to clarify my perspective, is uh, Firefox versus uh, Chromium or WebKit. Uh, Firefox has a steady growth with small contributions on a daily basis, while the WebKit, which is at the heart of Chromium and Safari, uh, has big hiccups or suddenly big steps in the world. And this is when Apple or Google suddenly contribute a big bunch of code. So you really see a difference in, in, uh, in the behavior of a project. And to me, that is a sign whether it's a community-driven or corporate-driven project. Um, is this what you are referring to for organizational affiliation or is it something completely different? I think that's certainly one aspect of it. So there will be metrics, I think, that okay. will will okay. get at those those answers. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. And then, you know, even things like, you know, even things like Elephant Factor play into this, like are all of the critical people on this project employed at one company. And so there are loads of stuff that yes. we can measure yes. measure around that. And I think I think what you said gets at kind of one of the core elements of, of this focus area. So one of the, um, one thing I shared in the chat is a paper that was released a week or two ago with a method for analyzing stakeholders' influence on an open source ecosystems requirements engineering process. That's the title. Uh, I, I just came across it because I talked to the first author on this paper, and I was like, that sounds like something this work group might be interested in. Cool. It's also at the bottom of the org affiliation Google Docs. Okay, good. Excellent. That's very cool. Um, okay, so do we want to talk about the goal for geography? So what we have here is understand where open source contributors are distributed around the world. We did talk about it a little bit earlier. Yeah. Didn't we? Didn't we? Okay. We did a little bit, yeah. So, yeah, I'm okay with that. We just John started talking just, about it, and then John joined, and so I we sort of stopped. And, 
No, I mean, I think that captures, at least I think where we sort of kick, or I threw some ideas to kick it off, and then I think um, where it started to go with. I mean, I think that's the gist of what we're after. So that makes, cool. that makes complete sense. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and then for responsiveness, we have understand how quickly a project responds to contribution contributions and engages contributors. That's good. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Well, I have to drop off the call to head to my next meeting, but um, I will do my to do's now and uh, see you all in two weeks. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. John. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. We don't mm -hmm. have an issue for the responsiveness stuff. You know, Daniel, Daniel was working on it. I thought we had something. Oh, maybe it's still in the metrics repo and I just missed it. Uh, um, one, of, one of Daniel's action items was to create a Google Doc and an issue. Um, <laughs> I'm just looking back at everything I see about the responsiveness metrics is that it's not, he hasn't created that doc or that issue yet. Okay. Um, but he did at one point, there is sort of a laundry list of things here. Things like time to merge, time waiting for a reviewer action. He said, he said these are specific to Garrett. Time waiting for a submitter action, time per cycles to review, time to merge. Time for approval, time for first response. So I think what we have kind of captures the, the spirit of that. And we can always tweak it and change it as we come up with new ideas. Oh yeah, exactly. That's one of the things we noticed in DNI was that once we started actually defining the metrics that would sit under that focus area, a lot of the kind of goals and questions got minor revisions as a result of that. Yeah. So were there any other focus areas that we had thought about putting in common or should we just leave it at, as is, put it in the repo and then work from there? I think these were only the only three that we've spent any amount of time talking about. I, I know there are certainly going to be more. We just haven't really spent the time to talk about those. Okay, I can take an action item to create a pull request. Awesome, thank you. Yes, thanks. Of course. Um, anything else anyone wants to talk about? We're sort of at the bottom of the agenda. I can come up with more. <laughs> Still 20 minutes. If there's something else we need to talk about, we can, we can talk about it. Okay. I posted in the chat um, the Google Doc with the org affiliation metrics. So it would be nice to have Toby and Brian here because last time we started um, thinking through this from a different angle. And when you look, open the Google Doc, at the top, right after the goals, which we already decided on one of the options. I'm going to remove the second option. We added a list of questions that this focus area will answer about organizational affiliations. So this is for in preparation for defining the focus area where we like to have a set of questions that people have. And then Within our focus area question metric approach, once we have the questions we want to answer, we would create um, detailed pages where we say this metric can answer this question and this is what to consider in answering this question. So that's the activity we did last time where we wrote down a whole list of questions. Now, the activity that I can suggest for the next 10, 15 minutes for us is to go through this list of questions 
see if there is anything we want to add to it. There are also maybe some duplicates or we can merge them together. And then the final ideal outcome would be a table where we have a name, a metric name, and the question next to it, which then we can, again, create a pull request and move over into the repository. I'm going to stop. This is what I'm proposing to do. Well, that seems reasonable to me. So what is the next step? Uh, having similar documents for the other two areas, geography and responsiveness, for example. So if we wanted to advance those other two focus areas, I think a similar document would be helpful, just as a way to brainstorm ideas. Yeah. What I'm proposing right now is to take the org affiliation metrics, focus on this focus area, and formulate out what are the metrics and questions that we have in this focus area. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to review these documents and uh, add any, any comment eventually. I'm going to highlight the part that I'm talking about. It's now in yellow. Yes, yeah, I see it. Okay. And then this would be used to derive the metrics, if I understand correctly. Right. So we, we have two different approaches that uh, we take to metrics. One is we look at the data, we figure out what are the metrics that we can create based on the data we have. And it, it's a bottom-up approach. Um, the issue with that approach is we sometimes then wonder, okay, what can we actually say about our projects now that we have these metrics? The other way is we think about what is it we want to know? What are the questions we have? And this is what this highlighted questions in yellow are about. And then we figure out, okay, what data do we actually need to answer those questions? So we have a top-down approach. And both end up with metrics in the end. Sounds good. Can we copy paste the link to these documents, both these uh, metrics and the uh, the common metrics focus area, those two documents into the main uh, notes at the top. Uh, sure. Okay. We should have edit rights. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I'll do that. So here's an idea. I was just going through this list of questions and I thought some of them have a hierarchy where some are main questions like how dominant are individual organizations and project, the first one. And then we have some sub questions more specific, like what is the elephant factor for the project of organization affiliation, which gets at the same general idea, but one is more general than the other. And I don't know if this makes sense, so I'm just going to put it out there. I create a small table uh, under the questions where we have the name, which would be the metric name. And then we can put a main question and then sub questions to start to organize all these ideas that we currently have. What do you think about that? 
Yeah, that seems reasonable to me because especially I know when we talked last last time about this doc, the impact of the job changes, organizational affiliation changes is something I'm particularly interested in. So I added a bunch of like sub questions underneath that. And so that's an example of one that, and um, I mean, these two, one of these is probably a subset of the other fiscal motivations and buying contributions, maybe. That's a good question. So feel free to move questions down into the table. I'm going to start moving them, but you're welcome to do that at the same time. I think the one that I just highlighted, how many organizations make up 50% of commits is also related to the elephant factor one. Yep. Isn't that the definition of the elephant factor? I think so. Here, I'll do the job changes one. Are we still trying to wrap our head around the question, the main question for organizations joining and leaving, or is that just a copying and paste waiting to happen? I just saw that one was a blank. Um, I don't know if there's one. I'm just going through the list. You're also welcome to just write a new question. Okay. I was, I was, I, was going to maybe toss something in there, which is probably going to be a slightly rewording of the sub questions, but um, do it. I just did that for one too. All right, I, I, I get slightly pedantic about these things and just start writing. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like all the boxes need filled in, which maybe yep. the case. Um, no, I think it's fine to just just fill it in. And what we what we should probably do is kind of a another review once we get everything organized and make sure that we have the right stuff. Well, I'm glad the table shows us where we need to add new questions. We need to have everything. It does. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm gonna remove the highlighting because it's bothering me. And okay, good, because it's really hard to read. Ah, uh, I feel yeah, I feel I feel Much like my better. eyes have reset now, and now the whole screen is pink for a moment. Well, Garrick, that was a great way to spend the last 10 or 15 minutes of the meeting. I feel like we made a ton of progress on that. It feels, feels more organized, if nothing else. It feels, because that massive laundry list of stuff was a little overwhelming, and I feel like we've got something that we can sort of take and put into focus areas now. Yeah, yeah this looks really good. Don't you know? I'm currently debating about the first two rows. One is organizational influence. The other one is organization impact. I feel like they're almost the same. Yeah. I could see where you're going with it. Um. I mean, one is presence. The other one is impact. Yeah. I mean, to a degree, you're always going to have these things that are somewhat intertwined, but I think I sort of get where you're getting after of that they're like presence would mean showing up, like you physically being in the room. This is, you know, the, the aura. Um, an impact to me would mean, you know, by contribution or what physically they have done. Is sort of like how I would read thinking about that, but I don't know if that's sort of the same realm you all are thinking about that. I think that's different. I, I would agree with the way the words are listed now by the names, but I don't think that captures the spirit of what's in the sub questions. Because the, um, so the spirit of this sub question, I, I remember when we talked about the how do organizational partnerships and collaborations impact the project. And so that was things like if you look at the Linux kernel, um, a bunch of the big hardware companies have people on loan to Lenaro for example. So Lenaro is this big nonprofit organization that, you know, people, um, and so people are sort of on loan to Lenaro. So they might be contributing from a Lenaro email address. And then you also get things like, if you look at Kubernetes, so VMware and Pivotal are both owned by Dell. Um, and a lot of our work on Kubernetes, we do jointly with, uh, with VMware. And so how does that, how do those partnerships impact the work that's happening in the open source projects, which I feel is very different. I actually feel it has nothing to do with, I don't know that organizational impact's a good summary of that. No, it's almost like there's like business relationships is sort of where you're going uh, after. Yes. Like, I think if we just say organizational relationships. Yeah, because I mean, it's almost the akin of like, you know, because... Um, I mean, using the example of the Hadoop world, like because Cloudera is well behind X project, all of their partner networks are going to be contributed to it as well. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. Cool. So yeah, I think make reference to Linaro uh, when 
engineers are seconded into Linaro. Uh, it, it has a it has a, a financial value between Linaro and the members. Mm -hmm. So when an engineer is seconded into Linaro, it's almost as if it's part of the annual fee that is paid. Uh, so the engineer works on topics that are defined by the Linaro Tech Leads uh, and the steering committee. And the steering committee, of course, is driven by the members. So um, it, it, it's as if they are contractors uh, or engineers really employed by Linaro one way or another. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, it's not just borrowing uh, an email address as a, as an ecosystem. Just as you were mentioning the uh, partners for Caldera, then Caldera gives an email address. In this specific case, the members provide of Linaro provide to us an annual fee that we use to hire engineers, and they also provide engineers that are part of our team, mm -hmm. and and they work very very closely as, as, a, as a single team. So it's almost like there's already like an explicit sort of defined relationship of because you are a member here, you are going to do X. Yes, yes. Uh, it's really part of the membership agreements. Uh, companies joining the NARO, they pay an annual fee, they provide engineers and as part of the agreements, there's a, a contribution agreement and copyright assignment because these engineers are as if the company paid more and Linaro hired more engineers. So, it, um, yeah, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Like the yes. way I guess I was looking at it from a different angle of like. Yeah, of course. That's why I'm very fine because the both yeah, both, both are, are equally, very valid. Yeah, correct. Yes, it's yeah. just different perspectives. Yeah, no, I mean, but I think a really valid, like, what what is compulsory and what is, like, yes, I'm trying yeah, to look good in front of my partner manager. Yes, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it does, it does create this sort of dual organizational affiliation that, yes. you know, ultimately, um, as the person doing whatever research you're doing, uh, you need to decide, do I count that TI person on loan to Lenaro? as Lenaro affiliation, or do I count them as Texas Instruments affiliation? Yes, um, exactly. yes. And that decision depends on what, what you're trying to achieve, I suppose. Um, yes, but it does, it does make it more complicated, guy, for sure. Because the same guy may do some work in his Lenaro time and use yeah. the Lenaro address, and that shall be accounted for Lenaro. But then they may also do some work as a TI engineer using the TI address. Mm -hmm. uh, email address and email account. So yep. it's tricky. And, yeah. and we so so Lenaro made my life pretty difficult when I was doing the organizational affiliations for my PhD. Yes, for I was about to say that, <laughs> correct. <laughs> Indeed, we had lots of discussion also with Jonathan and Greg on this. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we are out of time. Oh, yeah. Thank you everyone for helping us refine our metrics and helping us build out a better structure. I look forward to working more on this next time. Yep, I feel like this is a super useful meeting. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, my pleasure. Yes, thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye. Cheers, bye. Thank you, bye.